Hey there! In this video, we'll talk about the startup templates of the ABP framework. Startup templates are pre-built templates to ease up the process of starting a new solution with the ABP framework. And we have six of them. The first or default template is the app or application template. It is our main template. It's built with a domain-driven design and it'll be the one we're going to be talking about. The second one is the app no layers or the single layer application template. The difference between them is that the application template is built with a domain-driven design and that is meant for long-term applications. It's a rather complex structure, hard to maintain on the short term, but easier to maintain on the long term. And on the contrary is the no-layers template, which is meant for short-term and simpler applications that we're not going to add complex features to on the long run. And it's only got a single layer, unlike the domain-driven design layers. And next up is the module template if you wanted to create a reusable module or microservice. And the fourth one is the console template if you wanted to create a simple console application, maybe your own CLI. And I guess the last two are self-explanatory, the WPF template and the MAUI template. And we're going to be talking in details about the main one in this video. The application startup template provides a layered application structure based on the domain-driven design practices. When we create a new solution with the ABP CLI, we can use the T or the template option to specify the template name. So we can put hyphen T and then app. But if we don't specify, it'll still be app because it's the default one. Then we can specify the UI framework. We have MVC, Blazor, Blazor Server, and Angular, or even none if you're creating an API or if you have a different UI framework on your mind. So we can say ABP new, acme.bookstore and then hyphen u and then we choose one of them let's say mvc for example or blazor blazor server or whatever and mvc is the default one so if you don't specify the ui framework it'll be mvc by default then we can specify the database provider with the d option and our options right here are either ef or mongodb an entity framework core is the default one so if we don't specify it it'll be ef core then we could specify whether we'd like a mobile application framework or not. And we'll use the M or the mobile option. And we could say hyphen M, React Native, for example, or we could just leave it empty. And if we didn't specify, then no support for the mobile application framework is going to be added. Now for the solution structure. Based on these options, we'll get a slightly different solution structure. And the default structure, if we don't add any additional options, will be as shown. The projects are organized in a source and test folders. The source folder contains the actual layered application which is based on the domain-driven design principles as we've said before. And this diagram shows you the layers and the project dependencies of the application. First layer is the domain shared project. It contains constants, enums, and other objects that are actually a part of the domain layer, but needs to be used by all the projects in the solution. A book type enum and a book const class are good candidates for this project. And this project has no dependency on other projects in the solution, and all the other projects depend on this project either directly or indirectly. And next up is the domain project. This is the domain layer of the solution, and it mainly contains entities, aggregate routes, domain services, value objects, repository interfaces, and other domain objects. A book entity or a book manager domain service and an iBook repository interface are good candidates for this project. It depends on the domain shared because it uses constants, enums, and other objects that are defined in that project. And next up is the application contracts project. And this project mainly contains application service interfaces and data transfer objects or DDOs of the application layer. It exists to separate the interface and the implementation of the application layer. In this way, the interface project can be shared to the clients as a contract package. An iBook app service interface and a book creation DDO class are good candidates for this project. And this project depends on the domain share because it may use constants, enums, and other shared objects of this project in the application service interfaces and DDOs. And next up is the application project. And this project contains the application service implementations of the interfaces that are defined in the application contracts project. 
A book app service class is a good candidate for this project. And it of course depends on the application contracts project to be able to implement the interfaces and use the DDOs. It also depends on the domain project to be able to use the domain objects to perform the application logic. And next up is the Entity Framework Core project. And this is the integration project for EF Core. It defines the DB context and implements the repository interfaces defined in the domain project. And it of course depends on the domain project to be able to reference to the entities and repository interfaces. Then we've got the DB Migrator project. And it's a console application that simplifies the execution of database migration on both development and production environments. When you run this application, it first creates the database if necessary, it then applies the pending database migrations, and finally it seeds initial data if needed. And of course, it depends on the Entity Framework core project since it needs access to the migrations. And it also depends on the Application Contracts project to be able to access the permission definitions because the initial data seeder grants all permissions to the admin role by default. And next up is the HTTP API project. And this project is used to define your API controllers. Even though most of the time you don't need to manually define any API controllers, since the ABP's Auto API Controllers feature creates them automatically based on your application layer. But anyway, just in case you need to write some API controllers, this project is the best place for them. And it depends on the Application Contracts project to be able to inject the application service interfaces. Next up is the HTTP API client project. And this project defines the C-sharp client proxies to use the HTTP APIs of the solution. And you can share this library to third-party clients so they can easily consume your APIs in their .NET applications. And also for other types of applications, they can still use your APIs either manually or using a tool in their own platform. And most of the time you don't need to manually create C-sharp client proxies. And all thanks to the ABP's dynamic C-sharp API clients feature. And we've also got the HTTP API Client Console Test App project, which is a console application that's created to demonstrate the usage of the client proxies. And the HTTP API Client project depends on the Application Contracts project to be able to share the same application service interfaces in DDOs with the remote service. Almost at last, we've got the Web project, and it contains the UI of the application if you're using ASP.NET Core MVC UI. It contains Razor pages, JavaScript files, CSS files, images, CSHTML, and so on. And it also contains the main appsettings.json file that contains the connection string and other configurations of the application. It depends on the HTTP API project since the UI layer needs to use the APIs and the application service interfaces of the solution. And last but not least, we've got the test projects. The solution has multiple test projects and one for each layer. The domain tests is used to test the domain layer. Application tests is used to test the application layer. EF core tests for EF core. Web tests for the UI. And test base is a shared project for all tests. And in addition to the HTTP API client console test app project that we've mentioned before. The test projects are prepared for integration testing. It is fully integrated into the ABP framework and all the services in your application. It uses the SQLite and memory database for EF Core, and it uses the Mongo to go library for MongoDB. An authorization is disabled, so any application service can be easily used in tests. And as for the most important question, how do we run the application startup template? After running the DB migrator and making sure that the database has been created and the initial data has been seeded, all we have to do is run the web project. And here is our bookstore app. Thank you for watching and see you next time.